Okay, basic Dickerson T1000 video review. So this is the box that came in. Eight ninety, uh, sorry, nine ninety five. Local gun shop in Perth. Uh, just be careful where you buy them because you can pay up to one thousand one ninety five for them. And great box. I would say you could use that as a gun case or cover to you get a gun case for it if you haven't got one or keep it for whenever needing. Now, the, what I know so far about the Dickerson T1000 is it's modelled off the Benelli M7 or M4, can't remember the model name. And I think the chokes I found out for researching for chokes, that uh, the chokes fit the Benelli as well. Which is good to know it's modelled off the Benelli because that's a really popular shotgun. And it's about $3,000 for one of them here in Australia. So, what it also came with uh, is it had that in the barrel, uh, not the barrel, in the magazine, magazine tube. And what that does is it limit, limits two bullets to the magazine tube. Um, so, if you buy one, um, uh, make sure they take that out because there's only a guy in the gun shop remembered about that and he took that out. Apart from that, the gun was in the box. Uh, it came in the box so that it wasn't the store gun, which has been passed around and I don't want one of them anyway. The only good thing about the store ones is it's already made up for you. Because I had a lot of trouble putting the straight pull in. And I've only ever owned a 410 shotgun in my shotguns. And I knew nothing about chokes, and I knew nothing about gauge sizes like the 3 inch, 3.5, and 2 and 3 quarter. So I've learnt those. Now, a couple of mistakes I've made, and I'll show you that with the gun soon. Um, so the most important thing is when you get the gun, you're gonna if you get it like I did, you have to take that out. The people they in the gun shop don't, and you'll have to put the straight pull in. And to do that, oh, I'll explain when I got the gun. Uh, yeah, so that's mainly what this video is about and it's going to show i'm going to talk about just some things that i found with the gun there are a few little things that i'm uh, not happy with but you know it's a it's sort of like the best model of the cheap shotguns you've got the adlers and another one there and that has a better feel to it um, the straight pull feels really nice it's small and smooth and has a nice feel and the gun feels more quality than the Adler, but I must admit the bigger straight pull is actually quite handy. So it came with a manual, um, which really do read if you know nothing about chokes. And there's the receipt from the gun shop, and here's explaining about the straight pull, which I'll explain. And there's the choke stuff. So there's your chokes, your five chokes. Um, and the choke tool. So, right, you know the smallest choke, obviously, because it sticks out the barrel, which is lucky, because I'm going to talk about the mistake I made, which there's a whole stuff about it on the internet and questions and theories about it. But first, we'll go to the gun. Okay, so here's the, the gun. I wonder if I should bring that camera closer. Now, this is the tactical straight pull with that. To me, I still don't understand what that does. All I know is when you undo it, what the point of it is. If someone can tell me, that'd be great. But when you undo it, it just feels like it looks cool. I only got... That's the thing about when you buy a Dickerson. Now, as you, the, the model before this doesn't have the uh, Picatinny rail, although this is the other type of rail, Weaver, and that one. But the other model didn't have that, which is really handy because I got a torch for it and got one off eBay for 27 bucks. I wouldn't even shoot it with it on it because I reckon it would just destroy it. And that basically just comes up. There's no edit, editing in this video, um, can't be bothered, and I can't keep, 
There we go. So that just goes up like that. And I think all that does is maybe a more armrest or something like that. I don't know. Someone can explain that to me to be good. But the main thing is between this and the other model, you get that and you get this instead of just a normal butt. And I definitely like this because you can put the torch on it. So I'm glad I waited and got this one. Um, and I thought this was a bit longer than the other model. But when we looked at it, it's only, a, I, I think there is a slight frac, fr, fr, fraction longer, but it makes no difference. Okay, so when I shoot this, I have like a gel pack that I strap to myself and I keep it there because I just don't like the, uh, I think there's a lot of stress on your body. And I've read where you don't put it on your shoulder either. Okay, so without, without, oh, that's the problem with this is there's no sight on here and i've looked just to find iron sights you can get them in america but you can't get them here they won't send them here but you've got still got the bull sight and you can actually put that in the weaver rail and line that up and use that sort of like your iron sight i think that's what the whole idea of that is but it still doesn't feel comfortable without a scope so i had a scope on here and i broke it uh, i'm not going to i should say what model but it was about a three hundred. It was a two hundred eighteen dollar one, which is pretty standard price in Perth. And it was a here, and I shot it. And about the sixth shot, it just screen just cracked. I don't know. I thought it might have been, which I'm going to explain now. The problem with this gun that I'm finding is when you pull this back in the gun shop they're pretty rough on them and i, I realize why when you slide this if you do it gently say so like i'm very gentle on things so i would just do one shot at a time i put the bullet in and when i would after i put i would hold it put it in and then just i don't like ramming things but i think you've got to just let it go like that because what happens if you do it gently you see that that's what happens. Every time you go to fire this gun after you put a bullet in it, I mean, after you fire it and pull it back, uh, I think it'll still do the same. Uh, yeah, it will. I'm thinking it's, it's not semi-automatic. So what happens is if it's not pushed hard enough, it'll dry fire. So I was like, why is this dry firing? And because I did it slow, it just sits there. You've actually got to let it go and it goes in so you don't have to be gentle on it right and that's what will happen if you're too gentle you go to take a shot you put your bullet in just let it go like that thinking it's loaded and what happens it is but it's not far enough to hit the shell and or the primer and it just dry fires and you're not meant to dry fire guns i don't know the other thing is too to muck about or not muck about but uh work out how to use the gun with shells where I put live ones in. I brought so I can't it was yeah it was uh what model was it? I think it was Beretta. Beretta model uh snap caps and I put one in the tube and it keeps getting jammed in the tube. And the only way to get it out was to take this out and push that rod down and this here releases when you push on that it also releases this and it releases inside the tube for the next bullet to be pulled out. And what was happening is for some reason, even though the snap cap looked identical, it wasn't coming out. And I had to go inside there, push down with a little flathead screwdriver, and then poke the shell out each time because it was catching on the little catch that hot this lets the shell out. So there's the other type of snap caps, the red ones. If I was going to get them again, I would get those. So I still use it in here, but I don't ever put them in there. But I've never had any trouble with the shells themselves, the live shells. Okay, so when it came, this wasn't in. You have to take all this off, pull the barrel off. Now, one thing you've got to do, I'm sure you have to have this open when you pull that barrel out. If 
but what happens is they have a bit of like a plastic in here when you buy this gun it was sitting inside there keep that in there because when you pull that out this just lets go and it smashes straight into there and from there once is probably not like too bad like it did to me but if it was back right here and it went there it's going to smash straight into there so that's what happened to me i was trying to work out to get it in i followed instructions took out the barrel and you have to put this in verti hor yeah, vertical and then you slide it down because you cannot do it um, with the barrel in because what happens is it hits here it's I think they would have yeah so you'll put it in and go to pull it down and it'll hit on here that's why you have to take the barrel out so you can slide that right through and then put it down but just do make sure you're holding on to that even if you use this temporarily in there and then you can let it go and pull it out and put it in yeah you'll see if you buy it right it's even got instructions yeah part of the instructions is to not do that where was that <sighs> yeah it's here so it tells you here it comes with it anyway explaining it but even though i had the instructions i still have found a way to let it go and apart from that that was the two two things i was concerned about this is you've just got to make sure you push that right through it'll only dry fire anyway and the gun itself is nice it feels good way better than the adler it just feels like a real nice shotgun it would probably even feel just like the benelli and i love it now what it can withstand i found out because what i did was i set it up with the full choke and i've never used chokes before to go shooting and i took it out and did my first shooting video with it if you want i can put that video on and when i got out there my old man said to me you know what you should do you should put the biggest choke in and let it you know because it's a new barrel shoot through the full, full choke i thought that's a good idea even though i'd done that so what did i do I went and got the smallest choke and put the smallest choke in. If he hadn't said anything, I wouldn't, you know, it just became quick. It was raining a bit that day and I was hurrying a little bit. And that's a full choke. And when the full choke's in, it sticks out like that. It sticks out about that much. Can you see that? I'll just go like that. Like that. Now, I ended up putting that in and you think that's not a problem because i was only shooting pellets but then i thought i'd try slugs so i've literally shot slugs through the sm smallest choke now with the instructions on it it obviously says slugs are fine to go through the op full open but for all the other ones even the smallest one it says not recommended it says, doesn't say don't do it, it says not recommended now i've done a lot of research no one has literally seen someone blow a barrel up small shooting the uh slugs through the smallest choke there's people on there that said they've done it the same way i've done it one guy said he put a full pack of the, which would probably only be about five and it did nothing i put two through and if you're looking at the barrel and saying the barrel's swollen it's not that barrel is meant to be like that it has the barrel is actually enlarging for the chokes to go in so and i noticed that when i first took it out the box too and you can see that in photos of the gun so there was no swelling and even if it did swell the choke sticks out to allow for that swell anyway but i've actually pushed a full slug through that and it spread it open a bit in case it ever accidentally was to happen again not to me or someone else buys a gun uh so yeah, that's the mistake I've made, and it's done nothing to the gun. Still fires beautiful, and apparently they allow for that now. The the slugs different if it was an iron one or steel one, and the slugs apparently that I used, uh, I can't even remember what brand they were, but they are designed that if they do actually mess up, it's soft enough to squash and go through. But if I think if you did it too often, it would start causing pressure problems in the barrel. So I don't know what else to say other than 
I wanted to mainly mention a few things to be careful when you buy this and what to look out for and what I've noticed. Um, I don't know if each shotgun has its own, you know, recall, but the problem is it, it's cracked a, it's not an expensive brand scope, but it was around, I'd say mid range. Um, I'm going to try another one on it. It's actually the Bushnell 25, which is a basic one, but it's not called that here. I, it's got another name and it's just the Australian version where I think they buy the Bushnell from the same mob and put their name on it by the look of it. Um, the only thing I found is the new scope's got a lower one than the Bushnell uh, rectal adjuster, which means it'll fit in the bag a lot better with the scope on it. So. I'm also going to put, it's a 3 inch, that's another thing I didn't know and I'm glad I haven't made that mistake and put a 3.5 in. So it's a 3 inch, so I can shoot 2 and 3 quarters in a 3 inch. Before I put a 3 inch in, I'm going to, sorry, before I, yeah, before I fire 3 inches, I'm going to put a scope on it. Sorry, I'm not going to have a scope on it because I don't want to damage the new scope. I'm only going to put 2 and 3 quarters through the new scope and if that one breaks, I can take that back. And I've made sure I've told them that I'm putting it, uh, it on a shotgun. And they've said they're okay. Okay, so basically, you put your, like any shotgun, you feed them up for there. I just wanted to make this quick and make out the things to point out. I don't know if I've left out anything. I probably have. But the, those are your two main things. The gun itself, lovely gun compared to the other guns in the cheaper ones, you know. If you're looking for the tactical style and it just feels really nice compared to them the gun feels strong it feels quality uh, it's got dickerson on the barrel there and it looks you know the writing is all nice it's the turkish made guns probably made by the same people that make adler uh, but there you go that like i say watch out for that always make sure that goes in i've got a rule now load black no silver then i know it's right to fire don't be gentle let it go back okay i just don't like the sound of metal banging and smashing against each other uh most in the gun shop they would just pull this back lock it and let it go showing and go bang 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 but to me i'm a little bit soft on things now there's your um safety and if I was going to get a shotgun tactical, I'm glad I made the decision for this. There's always those little things you've got to learn. I heard that a lot of people have Adlers and they've got to take them back. Not that I'm mocking Adler. I just did talk to people and research. So, yeah, just look out for that. If you buy a brand new one, don't let that smash in. And it's probably not so bad from there, but from full back, it even says it can actually break that. And... You know, it'll leave a big scratch mark and you take it back to the shop, they'll know what you've done to it. And yeah, look out for this model. You can get the one with the coating on it, but you know, I'm glad. Even a guy that when I was buying it said, oh, I wish I had waited and got the one with the, the torch mount on it and where you can put your bullets. The only thing is, at least with the uh, other older model, it has bull sights on here with a, I think like a peephole one as well. And you just can't buy shit in Australia half the time. So you've got to have a scope basically, because with a scope, you've got to have it right, without a scope, you have it right in and you get the impact. With a scope, I notice, I think I've got a better grip on it. So yeah, there you go. Uh, I'll leave it with that. And if you're looking for one, that's just the things I found and you'll probably be pretty much pleased over and out.